Hi, this is Ethan with Bright Agrotech. Today we will be talking about pH. We'll give you a brief introduction on what it is. We will tell you how to manage pH and also offer some troubleshooting tips in relation to pH. pH is a measure of how acidic or how basic a solution is. Acidity means a pH below that of seven, which is neutral. Basic means a pH above seven. pH scale runs from one to 14. pH by definition is a logarithmic measurement of the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. What that means is you're me measuring the uh, H plus, which is a positive ion, or OH minus, which is a negative ion in solution. One is acidic, one is basic. Most hydroponic systems will require a pH somewhere around 6.0 to 7.5. I have found that 6.0 to 6.5 is a really nice range for most herbs and greens. So why is that pH range maintaining a nice stable range somewhere between 6.0 to 7.5 necessary? That is due to the fact that availability of the nutrients in your hydroponic solution will vary with pH. If you go too high or too low, you might lock out certain nutrients and you'll see deficiencies within your plants and slowed growth. Not a good thing. So if you keep it right at that happy medium, your plants will be happy and get most of what they need. A little bit of pH flux can sometimes be a good thing because it gives them a small variance in what is available. So various crops will have uh, varying nutrient and uh, pH requirements. So some crops will be very high pH requirement. Most, however, tend to be on the acidic side of things. If you're looking to find good information on that, there is tons of peer reviewed research on which crops like which pH online. You can also refer to Upstart University for this information. So how do you manage pH? First, to manage pH, you're going to need some way to monitor it. So what we have here is a handheld pH meter. This also will read nutrient concentration as well, but uh, you do need to monitor your pH, monitor it daily, it will change and fluctuate. We also have other varying methods to monitor pH, including auto-dosing systems, which will hook up to your main reservoir and dose for you from a reservoir tank of pH down. Uh, we also have old school litmus style tests, which is a strip of paper that will change color depending on what the solution pH is when it is exposed to that solution. So if you have an auto-doser or a handheld nutrient meter, you will need to calibrate it for pH as well as EC if it has that functionality, but that's a story for a different video. To calibrate your meters, you will need a calibration standard. This is something that is very exactingly produced and it never changes. It is always pH of 7.0. Sometimes these will have expiration dates on it, so be mindful of that. Typically, you will need a 7.0 and a 4.0 to calibrate your meter. Most calibrations are pretty quick and simple. Your meter will have instructions on it. It is also recommended to get probe cleaning solution. If you have a dirty probe, it will not read correctly. This stuff goes a very long way. So as far as what really works for these testing methods, the best ones are a reputable handheld meter as well as an auto dosing system. However, the price of these may put them out of range for most home growers, and it may be necessary to use an old school style strip kit. Strip kits are not the most accurate. There's a little bit of personal perception involved in what color you actually see on this strip. So it can vary a little bit in what you're reading, but it's better than doing nothing. You do want to buy a meter from a reputable brand. Brands like Autogrow, brands like Hanna Instruments, Oak Ton, Blue Lab, they all make reputable products. Don't just go and buy the cheapest thing on Amazon because it more than likely will not work very well or for very long. So adjusting pH. Once you've got a way to monitor your pH, you can actually take steps to adjust your pH. Now, depending on what you do to adjust your pH will depend on the pH of your starting solution, i.e. what is your tap water at when it's coming out of the tap. 
Here in Laramie, our pH, we are fairly lucky, it's close to neutral, so we wind up using pH down frequently. It will vary from season to season, so it's good to check your tap water regularly. Right now, ours is currently at about 6.8, so we use pH down to reach a target pH of about 6.0 to 6.2. If your water is lower than neutral and acidic coming out of the tap, you will want to use pH up. There are other various methods to raise and lower pH other than store-bought pH up and down. However, I do recommend using these because they will not alter other aspects of your nutrient solution and they are a constant solution so they will always be the same every time you purchase it. So for example, you may think that if you have an acidic tap water source, you can take just about any base to raise that. You might want to take sodium bicarbonate, something like that, even lye, something that's high pH, that would be a bad, bad idea. A lot of times this can be harmful for the plants, it can be harmful for the microbial life in your nutrient solution, and is just generally a bad idea because a lot of times these methods can change the electrical conductivity of your solution as well. So once again, I recommend using a constant store-bought solution. This will always be the same stuff no matter where you buy it and you can always add the same amount as long as you're sticking to the same brands usually even between brands they're very very similar. One major reason to do this is you're not going to save a whole bunch of money by using a household product to lower or raise your pH. Unless your pH of your water is very extreme it will take very, very small amounts of this to change your pH. Even in our medium-sized test farm, we uh, go through very small amounts. A gallon of this will last for months here, and we're, we are dosing a 300-gallon reservoir with this. So when it comes down to actually adjusting pH, I cannot recommend auto-dosing systems enough. pH can be difficult to adjust for someone who is not experienced in it. By and large, because this is very concentrated solutions, so a very small amount can go a very long way. As I said, we use a 300 gallon reservoir in our farm to dose a brand new solution and take it from a roughly neutral pH of tap water that we have here. It takes only about a cup or a cup and a half to bring it down. So as I said, a gallon will last quite a long time. If you're at a very, very small reservoir, you know, under 20 gallons, you might want to start with a teaspoon, let it circulate through your system, check it again. Always be checking your pH if you're doing it manually and trying to adjust it manually. Check, 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 because it will change. It will change frequently. If you are using pH down in an auto dosing solution, that means you are drawing your pH down from a reservoir with your auto doser. I recommend starting on the low side when filling up that pH down reservoir because we have actually experienced some situations where if you get that solution too acidic and you put in too much of this, you will get acidophilic bacteria growing inside your pH down reservoir, which is not a good thing. However, your mileage may vary and you may not have to worry about that if you are adding pH up. So, since pH down can be hard to adjust manually, I actually do not try and mess with it for our small reservoirs, uh, typically speaking reservoirs that are under uh, 50 gallons or less. The reason for that is, our uh, tap water is usually right around neutral. Right now, this time of year, we're reading about 6.8. So we're already pretty close to that range that's good for plants. Now, if you add nutrient solution, usually nutrient solution is a little bit acidic, so that will slightly lower your pH as well, so we get a little closer to that mid-6 range that's really nice. Plants also do a thing called selective ion uptake. As we mentioned earlier in the definition for pH, it's a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration of solution. So with plants taking up certain ions, leaving certain other ones behind, our pH tends to stabilize slightly down a little bit more from the action of those plants. So we wind up right about in the middle of that uh, pH 6.5 range or so, right about there. 
this will not always work for all solutions. You uh, really have to, it really depends on your uh, tap water. Is your tap water, you know, pH of eight? It's not gonna work. Another common problem when troubleshooting for pH issues is you might have high carbonate content in your water. It's very common in hard water. What this does is it buffers the pH and it makes it really hard to adjust. So it's buffering that pH at a high pH range. And even adding this a lot of times won't change it very much because there is such high carbonate content in that solution that it's just buffered and stuck right at that high range. If you are over 200 parts per million in carbonates, and the only way to do that is to have your water tested to find out for sure what your carbonate content is, if you are over 200 parts per million, it is highly recommended that you get an RO filter system to filter your reservoir water before putting it in. So, what are some common mistakes that you see with using pH up or pH down to adjust your pH? As we have said earlier, you do not want to use household products, uh, something that's going to be varying. You want something that is constant, something that you can rely on time and time again. Don't mess around with other stuff and experiment. You might kill all your plants. Other common mistakes that you will see is adding way, way too much of it too fast to your reservoir. Uh, as I have said in earlier sections, add a small amount, let it circulate through the reservoir and recheck. Uh, come back, you know, sometimes it depends on the size of your system, but you might want to come back up to half an hour later to give it time to fully disperse into solution because you will see constant variation and you don't want to see huge huge pH swings when you're adding it's better to adjust it slowly so that the plants do not get any shock from that. So to avoid making that mistake of overdosing your system with your pH adjustment solution you uh, want to use a measurement tool always and always start with a small amount once you have a feel for how it changes your water and how it changes in relation with your nutrient solution because nutrient solutions are typically a little bit acidic they will slightly lower your pH as well once you have a feel for that you can kind of get into the habit of knowing okay my 20 gallon reservoir takes you know a tablespoon to drop the pH this much in relation to what your pH is reading, if it's too high or too low, your plants may not have the available nutrients that they need. It may be in solution, but they can't use it. A pH range of 6 to 7.5 is recommended. Usually mid 6s are pretty good. In conclusion, pH is extremely important to plant growth and should be a top priority. So, we hope you liked our video. We hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if we left anything out of this video that you would like to know, please let us know in the comments below. Again, I am Ethan Walter here with Bride Agrotech. Until next time. Other common mistakes, this does look tasty. It is a nice orange drink color. Do not drink it, it probably won't be very good for you.